I'm Michael Laron, and this is the Writer's Journey Podcast, where you get a window into the life of a working science fiction and fantasy author. I'm on a mission to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I share my progress and discover what inspires my books and how I write them. You can find the show notes for today's episode at michaellaron.com slash podcast. This week, I'm giving an update on my work, and I'm answering your questions. Hello, and welcome to episode four of the podcast. I thought I would spend some time talking about what I'm working on writing-wise, marketing-wise, and then answer a few questions. In writing news, I'm working on my new series. It's an urban fantasy with a male hero called the Sound Mage Sonata. Think urban fantasy meets the Arabian Nights and Prince of Persia. It takes place in a modern city inspired by Dubai. Listen to episode three for a rundown of what the series is about and what kind of research I'm doing for it. That episode is called the Sound Mage Sonata series in Middle Eastern Research. Book one is called Prince of Nocturnes. I'm writing around 2,000 to 3,000 words a day, which is pretty good for book one. My book ones tend to move slower because I'm still trying to figure out the world, but this one's going to be fun. My hope is to be done with book one by the middle or end of May. In marketing news, this podcast is my big project right now. I'm spending a lot of time working on it and making sure that the quality is professional and that the content is entertaining. I welcome your feedback, so please drop me a voice message and let me know how I'm doing. I also participated in a promotion for givegrow.net. They are a company whose sole focus is to help others grow and develop, and this past month they focused on authors. The promotion was called the Indie Author Super Bundle, and 25% of their gross sales went to Pencils of Promise, which is a very noble cause. The audiobook version for my book, Be a Writing Machine, is in the bundle. There were some amazing books, courses, and services in this bundle, so I was honored to be invited to it. The value of all the services was around $5,000, and you could purchase them and get everything, all included, on a pay-what-you-want model. It was some good exposure for Be A Writing Machine, and I made some affiliate income from it, so that's always a good thing. Let's move on to some listener questions. Confession, this is the first month of the show, so as I record this, I haven't actually published the show yet. However, I have a true fan who sent in a ton of questions, and he just couldn't wait until this show was live. Seriously, guys, this guy sent me a lot of questions. In fact, he sent me so many, I can't answer them all. So I'll play just a few. Oswald McChipperson asks, I was once beaten up by a stranger in an alley one time because I smiled at him. Tell me, Michael. Have you ever smiled at a stranger and then wished you hadn't? Thanks, Oswald, and I appreciate your question. Actually, yes, I have a habit of saying hello and smiling to strangers all the time. Once, I was in a gas station parking lot pumping gas, and I nodded to a gentleman at the car ahead of me. The guy then approached me and tried to get me involved in a pyramid scheme. It took me five minutes to get away from him. True story. And if you really want to hear a funny story sometime, I'll do an episode on an experience I had firsthand with a pyramid scheme company. It's really creepy, really hilarious, and really sad. Oswald has another question. As a young robot, I was often afraid of socket wrenches. They scare me to this day. Tell me, Michael, what was your most irrational fear as a child? Wow, you're getting deep, Oswald. Okay, so I was scared of some weird stuff as a kid. Sewer grates, for example. One time, when I was six or seven, I was at a house party. My aunt and some relatives were sitting on the front porch, and I was playing my Game Boy in the grass. And every time my family laughed, it was nighttime, dark outside, I thought a monster would come out of the sewer grate to eat us. No idea why. Maybe because the sewer grate looked like teeth? I don't know. It was completely irrational. One more question. You have a lot of ideas and creative premises. Tell me, Michael, have you ever come up with a book idea that didn't work? And if so, just how badly did it end for you? Oh, Oswald, if you only knew. Anyone who knows me knows that I occasionally come up with some strange ideas. Yet I always find a way to make them work, and I'm always somehow able to sell them. For example, my gamelet series Moderation Online is about a group of terrorist vegetables attempting to take down an empire of processed foods. I know it sounds utterly ridiculous, but trust me, it works. Not all of my ideas work, though, so I had to browse through my sketchbook for some of my worst ideas. I happened to find some audio, actually, from a reader survey I did at a book reading once. I've never played this before, folks, so this is a podcast exclusive. Here we go. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Alright, so I have this idea for an urban fantasy. Imagine 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meets Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, come on. That, that was a good one. How about this one? It's an idea for a post-apocalyptic novel. Imagine a blender and a gang of household appliances trying to make their way in a post-nuclear world. It's like the brave little toaster meets the last of us. Huh? Huh? What the hell's the matter with you people? Haven't you read quality fiction lately? Hey, hey, what, what, what are you? Hey, get your hands off me! Hey, stop, stop! <laughs> I want my money back, man. That one brings back painful memories. Thanks, Oswald, for your questions. Very much appreciated. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed the show, here are a couple ways to help a brother out. If you're listening to this on Anchor, favorite the show. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, do me a favor and write me a review and share it with your friends. You can, of course, visit my website and learn more about my work at michaelloran.com. If you have a question, send me a voice message on Anchor and you just might hear it on the show. Next week, I'll be talking about the writing life. Until then, I leave you with a quote. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. H. Jackson Brown, Jr. <laughs>